Welcome to the Show Me the Money. We are your guide to gambling on the movies. We are your hosts, Nick the Father Turner. I'm Pat the Hat Stango, and it's finally here, Nick. Oh Oscar my God. Nom, 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 noms. So, what time did you uh, did you get up to become yeah, aware question, of these nominations? Pat. I I woke up at about seven forty. Okay. And, you know, I woke up, I wasn't thinking, oh, it's nom day, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I was just waking up, you know, right, I grab right. my phone as, as soon as I wake up, uh, like everybody else mm -hmm. and see what's going on in Pornhub. Yep. Yep. But I, I mistyped and I, I wrote, I, I auto filled in post, took me to the Washington post mm, and I saw that it was Oscar nom nom day. Yay. And I just scrolled, 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 scrolled looking for my, for my dad, Bill Nye. And I found it. him, Patty. He, and he, uh, I know we had talked about a bit. Maybe right. an hour later, Pat uh, Lyra finally looked at her phone and saw a text from you, Pat. And what what did you text at her? So I texted your wonderful wife, Lyra, that if Nick is not awake yet, to wake him up with the camera going on her phone. And film him as as she tells you that Bill Nye was just nominated for an Academy Award. Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, you know, you woke up, you found out that she saw the text and none of this happened. I should have planned it better. I should have called Lyra yesterday yeah. and told her she's got to wake up at 530. She's got to wake you up, mm -hmm. you know, at 535 and, and do the it, it, next year. When Bill no, Nye gets his second nomination. have been worth it. We could have had yeah. a good laugh and then sat there in the dark for two hours until Otis woke up. Yeah. that That's the, the one thing. I had that little ping of guilt of do I wake up these parents of a small yeah. child who probably are so sleep deprived um, just for this bit. And, yeah. I'm going to be and, honest with you, Pat. Uh, that shit's over kind of. Because uh, our baby sleeps through the night every single night for so, like twelve hours. So you're just reg you're back to being regular people that we should have no sympathy for anymore. Uh, I am sure. Lyra sometimes gets up in the middle of the night to just to you know wander around the neighborhood. But uh, right, right, that's her. That's own her thing. own journey. You know, yeah, she's yeah. a Scientologist. Yeah. Um. You know who else is a Scientologist? Tom Miss Cruise, Kibich. he did he did not well him too, but he was never a serious contention for an Oscar nomination. But Tom Cruise was not this year. he didn't get it. He's one of the snubs. But yeah, today is I almost feel like Oscar nominations morning to me is an even bigger deal than Oscar Day in some ways. I love nomination morning. I no. love getting up early. It's it's exciting because it's like the one day that there's like the most exciting news you could get, but there's no competition yet. Right. You're like not mad at your friends for taking your money yet. Yes, yes. It is just this announcement of like, here's a nice thing, and here's another nice thing, and then here's 50 other nice things. All these right. people are it's getting like nice we're, things. We want to celebrate a million people. I don't know why they're not like, the categories aren't like 40 deep, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just put every put everything in it's there. It's fun but to highlight people. It's so nice. It's such a nice. And of course, there's snubs, and we'll go over the snubs. But oh, mostly and we'll go over the non-snubs. And I there's honestly one name that I think maybe had been maybe even more appropriate to wake me up to announce. But we'll get into it, Pat. Let so do we want to start with the the big nominations? Yeah. Go through. Let's start with, of course, the big one, best picture of the year yes. so and, so okay so if you have been following on our patreon which mm -hmm. i know at least eight of you have yes. uh you and got you. our um our picks that mm -hmm. we um we talked up uh, our picks out last week but honestly i changed a couple what about you pat i think i changed one or two or locked in some things yeah we yeah. were pretty much finalized by this weekend i think by saturday yeah. or so yeah. we had we had locked in that spreadsheet um, and we both did great. You know, we went for the big six categories. Yeah, I think we did do great. Yeah. I mean, we both went, and this is what's infuriating, is we tied. We had a $10 <laughs> yeah. bet. Yeah, 28 And we each. tied. But we got 28 out of a possible 35. 
we went we each went 28 for 35 mm-hmm. on our picks which shows you're very smart for listening to to the two of us because we know what we're talking about 28 for 35 that's an incredible average yeah so pat can we start off with the acting categories okay all right and let's particularly i want to start off with the lead actor and actress categories all right, because well, let's, mm-hmm. Pat, I I did better in the, these categories than any other, and I want to start it off with me looking cool. Well, you know what? Let's then go to lead actress, which is kind of the I think the marquee category for all of the Oscars this year, and you yeah. did now, great here. Thank you very much. I did not uh, get five for five because honestly, I would be surprised if any pundit got Mm -hmm. five for five on this because there were two surprises one a surprise only to most people but not to me Mm -hmm. and that is the most unconventional campaign which i love has people riled pat so mad people are up in arms about this movie's ability to create a campaign that didn't involve giving money to variety it didn't Mm -hmm. involve giving money to the headers of gold derby it didn't mm-hmm. involve the normal money where people think hey uh, where's my piece nom 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 i need my 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 piece of cheese right right no one got their beak wet because it was a campaign based around knowing ed norton hanging and out at courtney cox's house so courtney cox is is we're talking she's of course, the linchpin uh uh pat about about andrea riseborough yeah who well let's to leslie to Leslie. I mean, that is who this year's Oscars should be dedicated to. The the Oscars should open up with a dedication that just says to Leslie. Because uh, that yeah. that is that that's where the dedication should be. Okay, All right. So, so let's I mean, yeah, let's just get into it. Okay, so it's uh Kate Blanchett and Michelle Yeoh, as everybody uh yep. prophesized. Yep. Um the other person that I think was like pretty much three across the board was Danielle Deadweiler for Till, and she got nothing. She now, did not get it. Um, Michelle Williams, who, as I noted in December, was hardcore campaigning. Yes, she, she was in it. articles in every publication that she could have been. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and she was going for it, and she got it. Congrats she to got her. It. And yes, another I- woman, Ana de Armas, as we all know, a late surge, been getting a lot of awards in Europe, and. Um, I think people discounted her because the film sucks and her accent sucks. Right. But her performance right. shown through. And to shine through that accent, I think, is what this melting pot we call America is all about. Yes, yes. I feel like this is one of those movies, the uh Blonde on Netflix, that benefited from a lot of people sort of half watching it on their phones. You know, where they almost maybe even like turn the sound off at a point and then every once in a while would look up and they're like, oh, yeah, she looks. Oh, great. You know, I just fast forwarded like to different points, 20 minutes apart in the movie just to see what her performance was. And I think that helped. I think there's probably a lot of (laughs) Academy voters who watched Blonde the same way on fast forward, on mute, half paying attention, looking up. Oh, Ana de Armas looks fantastic. She's doing a oh, lot and of acting. She's acting. It does not matter where I paused, Pat. She was acting the fuck out of the script. Yes, yes. This this nomination was uh, for lots of acting. She did lots of acting. Uh, Michelle Williams did lots of acting. She in did the so much acting, although um, she should have been in the supporting category from what I understand, and she could have been. And, right. and probably honestly, would have won. Honestly, the supporting uh, category is just as competitive as the lead category. So I don't know how much good it would have done. Mm-hmm. Perhaps more so. Yeah. And then, so then those were the, the nominees were Yo, Blanchett, uh, Michelle Williams, Ana de Armas. And then let's get into it. The fifth nominee, Andrea Riseborough, 4 2 Leslie. The, the campaign worked. She basically texted a bunch of her friends. Hey, could you text other people to tell them I was good in this movie? Could you tweet about me? This is like a strategy of, of you know, you're, you're, you're in the comedy world of when yeah. you're like, hey, I got a show coming up. I'm trying to get people to come out. It's on a Tuesday night. No one likes to go on Tuesday. Yeah, for Could sure. I, get I got some of my buddies? headlining. 
Right. And can and I, I get my get people out? Yep. And then you just like, hey, could you just like tweet out this poster for me and tell people there's a cool show to come to it? That's basically what Andrea Riseborough and her representatives did. They just texted a bunch of her friends and were like, hey, could you do me a favor and tweet about how I should be nominated for an Oscar? And, you know, and it worked. Yeah. Um, because that's the beautiful thing about almost making it in Hollywood is that mm-hmm. you know all the people who made it. Yes, yes. And Cause... not a lot of times will they all tweet it the same day about how great you are unless you ask them. You gotta ask you gotta ask for tweets. That is Closed a great Closed mouths lesson. don't get fed, Pat. Yes, yes. Squeaky wheel gets grease. We all we know this, but we don't put it into practice. Andrea Riseborough was the one who actually reached out to all these. And she's not a big star. She's always like fifth on the call sheet. But mm-hmm. first even, and second on the call sheet is like Gwyneth Paltrow. Ed even Norton. She to, knows even in to, to, to Leslie, she was sixth on the call sheet, which is weird because she's the star. Well, she's just comfortable at this point being she's like. You think she showed up first day and she's like, hide my name. Yeah, put me six on the call sheet. That's what I'm used to. That's what I'm at my best. They're like, well, you're in every scene. She's like, still six on the six. call sheet. Wow, that is an act. That is an artist. That's a and that's that's how you get people in Hollywood to tweet about you. She's probably very humble. She's probably a great great conversation at Crafty. Mm-hmm. You know, like she's got to be just such a great on set presence, and sometimes that leads to. Big stars tweeting about how you should get an Oscar nomination. Yeah, because when you're six on the call sheet, you live at Crafty. Yes, yes, yes. She's probably she's probably one of those people at Crafty who's like, no, 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 no. You you actually don't want it. The eggplant here is very good. You got to try the roast beef. And and mm-hmm. they're like, then Ed Norton's like, ah, oh, you know, I had that roast beef that you suggested yesterday. It was great. And she's like, okay, glad you like the roast beef. If in a couple of years I ask you to tweet how I should get an Oscar nomination. Just keep that in mind. So, Pat, do you know the special ingredient here that a lot of people don't mention when they talk about how this happened? Uh, I don't. Tell me. The special ingredient is that if she was not phenomenal in the movie, which, of mm. course, I haven't seen because haven't that's not what this show is about. No. Um, she is phenomenal in the movie because people, they just wouldn't have done it. It's too personal. To right. open your home for people to like to tweet out something like that right. about a person who is not famous and cannot reciprocate. Right. It's right. not done. It's unheard of in this city. She had to be good in it. Is she the greatest performance Ed Norton's ever seen? Maybe not, but she was definitely good enough yeah. that he sent that tweet. And she's a great conversationalist on set it's those two things in combo led to this nomination i I think it's great i think this does it shows people you gotta if you want something you gotta ask for it yeah i guess that's that's the lesson uh, here two leslie is around the 699 price point uh Mm -hmm. on um video on demand there p P v o d as you say do we wait? I feel like this is one of those. I'm going to wait until the last week or two, let it drop a little bit. I mean, I know part yeah. of what we do here is give advice on gambling. I think we also could give advice on when to rent a movie on, on. No, TVOD. I think that's a, that's a great, that's a great thing to mention because if you're looking at these nominations today and thinking, okay, well now I know finally the list of the movies that I need to see. Well, you're in luck because, um, in the next category, uh, well, you know, I guess let's not spoil it. Um, well, even in this it. category, Best Actress, for those of you who haven't seen Tar yet, Tar drops on Peacock this Friday. Okay, Friday, well, unfortunately, January I already paid six ninety nine to see Tar, Pat. I, I wish I had told. I only found out this information a few days ago, but for our listeners, Tar will be streaming on Peacock. Same channel that'll get you the WWE Royal okay. Rumble this weekend. So it's a great deal starting Friday. You could see Kate okay. Blanchett in Tar. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Of course, on Showtime, Blonde. Yep. Of course, on Netflix. Of um, and uh, the Fablemans is still twenty dollars. So nobody watched the Fablemans, obviously. 
Or go see it in a movie theater. Or go see it in a movie theater. In some of those. I don't know what's going on. It'll pop up someday. Um, anyway, so that is uh, our list of nominees for Best Actress. Pat, what are yep. your thoughts on where your money's going? Uh, on Best Actress, I mean, here's the thing. I saw Tar for a second time in theaters this past weekend. Now, did you see and- it in theaters the first time as well? Oh, yeah. I've so seen it twice, twice in, in the theater. Wow. Twice Big in the Todd theater. Field guy. Well, I saw it the first time because I, I want to see Tar. And this past weekend was was Mama Stango's birthday. And so she was wow visiting me for the weekend. And she wanted to see some movies in the movie theater. She wanted to see Tar. She's got to catch up on her Oscar movies. What so mom took, wouldn't want to see Tar, I ask you? A three-hour psychosexual drama about art. Listen, well, it's a great loved- movie. It was written in three weeks. It was 92 pages. I don't know how it turned into three hours, but it did. And and seeing this again, I just feel like I know it's boring to go with the front runner. But Cate Blanchett to me feels like such a slam doink, you know? Yeah, for, I, I can't say put money on her right now because she's the front runner, but I don't really see an underdog in this category that's worth putting money on. I mean, here's the thing. May, the only underdog at this point that could be worth anything is maybe Riseboro pulls this same shit again a week before voting ends yeah. for the actual award. So maybe Pat, Andrew Riseboro wins. I don't Pat, know. Pat, yeah. let me let me let me get in here, okay? Yeah, talk me to Earth. Um Andrea Riseboro. Yeah. Who as we all know, came out of nowhere. Um, and there was only one week of voting. I'm not sure if we discussed this or if we knew this when we were talking. But there was only one week of voting, and this campaign took place every day of that one week. Wow, brilliant. So it, was, it didn't come in at the end and try to see if people were still, had anybody hadn't left their ballot. No one had put their ballot in yet. Right. Okay, so with that knowledge and the fact that Oscar always has somebody in the major category come out of nowhere and win the fucking thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What is a better story, Pat, I ask you? Is there, a, is there a better... I am sorry that this is a white woman. I am sorry. Right. But right now... We it both is, apologize. And the fact that both of the uh, best actress contenders that uh, are black did not make it. Not great. Not ideal. Not great at all. Yeah. However... We're trying to look forward, okay? This yeah. this podcast, I'm sorry, it's not to uplift the people. No. It's to put money in the hands of degenerates. Yes, yes. And we hope it's a diverse group of, degener- uh, of degenerates across all pa- races and creeds. Pa- Pascal. Yes. yes. I put $37.87 on Andrea Riseborough to win Best Actress. Okay. And if she wins... I I texted this to you. Yeah. If she wins, I will I will get one thousand two hundred forty nine dollars and seventy one cents. Now, that's plus thirty three hundred odds. You might yeah. say that's crazy. Well, Pat, remember the beginning of last week when I said plus seven hundred on uh I was gonna say Angela Lesbury, Angela Bassett. Right. Remember remember and, when I said that? And now well, she's I don't even joint. think it that line made it to when our show dropped. Wow. Because now she is minus two fifty, Pat. Wow, lines Things change. can move. Yes. yes, and there is no way that Andrea Riseboro at thirty seven dollars to win a maybe like a shitty car. Right. That's right. not. A, that's a bad idea to you. Right. And you, you knew could... about this, and you said there was nothing worth betting on. What the fuck? I mean, the thing with Andrea Riseboro is she's got that. She's got that taste for blood now. You uh-huh. know, she liked it. She 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 went out and she got herself a nomination. And I'm sure that tastes great, but she wants more. And, so, and I, right. Now that she's, you know, got the nomination, she's going to be showing up at people's houses, at yes. voters' houses with yes. her DVD player in hand. Yes, yes. She's going to yes. say, hey, what are you doing tonight? Oh, your kid has a project due? Great. You and I can watch this movie. Yes, yes. And I'll help him with the project. 100%. You know? I'm going to get yeah. 100. Look at me. I'm such a hard worker. Yes, yes. I, I think she is, she is, you've let the wolf into the hen house now. That is what you've done with Andrea Riseborough. She's in the house. And 
I don't think she's leaving the house quietly. I think right. she's okay. got a real shot. Now, look, everyone says this is Kate Blanchett, right? Because we watched the movies and obviously Kate Blanchett is the person who gave the performance that that we are all thinking about. Yes. Michelle Yeoh is great in a great movie. But guess yes. what, Pat? She's not better than Kate Blanchett in Tar. Nobody is. Nobody is. Nobody Nobody is. But it's, it's, she's got th- th- three Oscars if she wins this. Yeah. Which fucking sucks. And Frances McDormand has three. And in my mind, that's six to one person. Yes. that That is... That is, it is tough to imagine they're going to give someone else three so easily. Um, so well, it's they, not easy. I mean, she fucking killed she, it. She dog. gave Tar as the best performance in she decades, fucking obviously. Killed it so but that's hard. a, it's a big deal. There's very few actors they've given three. It's France McDormand and Nicholson. Tar is the best Nicholson. performance of the year in it, but every category. In every category, across even sports, across all different fields. 100%. The WWE this weekend. Yes. She should, Cape Blanchett should win the Royal Rumble. That is how towering the performance in Tar was. But a third Oscar, there could be some voters who are like, that's a, that's a stretch. And then over there, Andrew Riseborough was doing my kids science homework. So maybe I vote for her. This is yeah. it's interesting. Also, it's famously, interesting. they share a manager, which is why Kate Blanchett was one of the people that spearheaded this tweet campaign. Yeah, for Andrew and Ryan. now, and now this could be the mistake that that she regrets because she let Riseboro into the house. Tim, you she know I'm, or, Tim. Your name's Tim. You're excited, Pat. Yes, yes. You know I'm a Survivor fan. I do know this about you. Yes. So in Survivor. When you tell people to vote for uh, to like to vote for you, which mm. in this case is the equivalent of telling people to vote uh, to not vote for you. Right. Right. But the minute you tell people to vote for you, guess what they do? They vote for you. Mm-hmm. And I think this applies here. The minute you tell the voters like, I don't respect this anymore. This is not something I'm after. I know you are because your career sucks. Me, I've won a couple. I'm probably going to win eight more. I don't need it. I don't want it. I think it's disgusting. Mm. I can't be like the person with three Oscars in my house when people come over. It's embarrassing. Right, right, right. So they're not going to do it. So so Blanchett might end up campaigning for Riseboro all the way through. Oh, 100% she will. Wow. Listen, I mean, I, I agree. Right now, the only person I put money on in this category today is Andrea Riseboro. She's got the big underdog money. If you're going to vote for Kate Blanchett or, or bet on her, I'd say wait until the day before the Oscars because, you know, also, we'll see you know what Frances McDormand has done since winning her third Oscar? Nothing. Well, she was nominated today for producing Women Talking, but acting wise. No, no, no. That, she's, she was nominated, yes. She, like, her production company gave money. That's not yeah. what, that's not work. Right, right, right. No, no, no. That's, she's famous that's enough that just time. like that happens, her name gets put on stuff. She doesn't even know that she thought she was. She worked on. She said, "Right, right." She, yeah. They today she woke up. So she said, "Didn't get anything." Or, no, she no, no. Like, you yeah. did the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She was I like, mean, like, "Finally, we're going to show Harvey." Right. Like Brad. Brad Pitt has like five producing Oscar nominations. Yeah, boring. And he's aware of one of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so no, no I guess so. Franz McDormand, you're right. Kate Blanchett might just go out and 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 campaign for Andrew Riseborough. I mean, this is going to be one to follow the next the the next month and a half. This is oh, going to be very we'll exciting. be following this hot shot. Very exciting. Okay. So so that best yeah. actor. Let's best get actor. into it. Get into so it. So the so the nominees are Colin Farrell for Banshees, Brendan Fraser for The Whale, Austin Butler for Elvis, Bill Nye. Congratulations, Nick. Your man did it for living. Bill Nye's nominated. And for After Sun, Paul Mescal got the wild card fifth spot. Nick, you went five for, five, for five, five in this if, category. If you include Best Actress, I went nine for ten in the Best Actor and Actress categories. That's incredible. That That has got to be... You. It's hard. Uh, it's incredible. I mean... There are people who this is their job somehow year round (laughs) is to just all year write up lists of who's going to get nominated. Yeah. And I you go across the board. 
No one else is doing nine out of ten. No, but in the best leads, of course, just not. this no. guy, Nick Turner. You no one it. has Mescal, Ana de Armas, and Andrea Riseboro. I'll tell you that fucking much. It's true. It's true. I mean, listen, I I weep for the sad man. I had Adam Sandler in that fifth spot. Sure. He didn't get it. Uh, so he, but I think for Adam Sandler, he's one of those guys that he gets to rack up another snub. Although, God. I wish it was Adam because Paul Mezcal, according to Bovada at least, is already in fourth place, and they have Bill Nye at worse odds than he was two months ago when I put wow. thirty bucks on him. Wow, he's at so twenty five hundred. He got nominated and immediately dropped. I mean, the thing yeah, with Bill but Nye, no one's bet on it yet. We'll we'll yeah, see yeah, how yeah. it moves. Yeah, and with Nye. The the nomination to me is the award. You I know. hate that shit. It is. That's so rude to say about the guy who is probably going to win. And I'll tell you how it, how he has a path to victory. Okay, tell. I'm so excited. To hear As we that. all know, all the televised categories, everyone has split one. So everybody thinks, oh, these are the front runners. Mm-hmm. Um, the whale. How many other nominations did it get besides Brendan Fraser? Let me ask you. It just got the one, I it think. Got I think zero, it just got Hong Chao. Which means no one no, it is got, fucking thinking about Oh, it did get Hong Chao. Supporting actress. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. Okay, but so she sort of got nominated for the menu. It says for the whale, but I feel like Hong Chao yeah. sort of got nominated because people yeah. love her in the menu because on Because people saw her so much this year. Yes, yes. And the fact that another actor got nominated means we're bored by his performance and we're looking around the screen. Yeah, yeah, Who yeah. Who else is going on? Okay, no, no one else was nominated. You know the Banshees—they didn't get any Critics' Choice. You know they're out. They're okay. not going to win any awards. Oh, you're thinking Banshees because Banshees has the second most nominations of any movie tied. I know for... it's embarrassing. That it's going to like uh, pr- try to sit up so or stand up so many times and sit back down. The people and O for nine are he's predicting. Elvis is. I think people finally realize it's one of the worst movies that it was ever made. So. I will say with Elvis, it got the best picture, nom, 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 but it didn't get Baz Luhrmann. I don't think it got screenplay. I mean, the it movies that get... got best picture, I mean, there's a lot of them. It it didn't get uh, editing, or I might have got editing. It didn't get, uh, not getting director, I do agree, makes Elvis seem softer than it did. I still, listen, Austin Butler is still my ride or die. Not, it's not only not this. getting director it's not getting screenplay yeah it didn't get screenplay and the whale here's what i'll say about brendan frazier he absolutely feels very weak right now because the whale didn't get a best picture nomination it didn't get director Mm -hmm. didn't get screenplay that really does feel like a movie that people do not like nearly as much as these other movies that the other actors were nominated for like the whale is by far the least liked of those best actor contenders Mm -hmm. you know not getting the best picture or even a screenplay nom 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 really shows people don't love this movie i think he was obviously still in first place because he won the critics choice right um but i think the lack of love for the movie hurts him and so I think, you know, it's at least back to a three three way race. And hundred percent. I think Austin Butler is a joke. And I hate him. Oh, and he was great on SNL. No, I mean, yeah, you keep saying that, but SNL doesn't Jewish matter. That's not a movie. I, I mean, it's something a lot of people see. If SNL was a movie, then hey, congratulations, fucking Daryl Hammond Taren, would have an Oscar. Mc- yeah. Taryn Killam. You'd have six yeah. Oscars. Yeah. But you well, don't. He does. Because it ain't. Yeah. Killing Gunther did not get any Oscar nominations when that so came out. So I think Till Nye still got a shot. But I also kind of hope Colin Farrell ha- uh, gets it because if Colin Farrell gets it, I, I win $200. If, if Bill Nye wins it, I get $600. I mean, here's the thing. If somehow Bill Nye. And Andrew Riseborough were to win Best Actor and Best Actress, 
you you are just like swimming in a, a vat of gold coins like Scrooge McDuck. Well, speaking, You're of sad. That, uh, speaking of gold coins, let's get into best picture. Uh, let's do it. The big one. Wait. Uh, no, we didn't do supporting actress. I'm sorry. Wait, we didn't do any you, supporting. No, oh. we've only done two categories. Guys, We're, I got so excited. I just wanted to talk about my bets. Let, let's well, let's let's keep going with acting then. Okay. Let's go into supporting yeah, yeah, yeah. actress. So uh, this is another one where you came damn close, but I also came damn Dolly close. Dolly De Leon, we screwed wanted it more than we knew it was going to happen. Yeah, she screwed us both. But so the she nominees are, us. personally, she did it. So well, the nominees Triangle are, Sad just got so many nominations in big categories. Yeah. It blows my mind that this didn't Yeah, happen. people love that Ruben Oslin guy. They love him. Um, so the nominees for supporting actress. All right. So you got your favorite there, Angela Bassett for Black Panther. Two nominees from Everything Everywhere. You got Jamie Lee Curtis and Stephanie Hugh. She uh, got both, it. She got it. So I predicted that one. So that that was my yeah. plus one there. So they both got nom nom noms. Carrie Condon for Banshees. We both predicted she would get it, and she did. And then you got it, Hong Chow for the whale. But I'd say more for the menu. Got the fifth spot for supporting actress. For sure. It's a good lineup. It's, it's a good a lineup. Good lineup. It's a good lineup. So I mean, the conventional wisdom now is that Angela Bassett is the favorite. I, I mean, the the thing about that, and I think she she is the favorite. And listen, she's a great actress, great career, but winning for a Marvel movie, winning an acting award for a Marvel movie. Still feels like a thing that I'll believe it when I see it. Is, Yo, is also, how I'm I think at because category. she came out of nowhere to win both of the televised awards means that the, I think that the, the category is still volatile. I agree. I think the SAGs, when, when the SAGs happen, if she wins that, then sure. But if I definitely see a world in which someone other than Angela Bassett wins that SAG award for supporting actress and the category then is completely up for grabs on Oscar so, day. So Andrea Riseborough is at plus 3,300. Oh my God. Um, and that's a great, I mean, it's like, there's just, I mean, there's no reason not to put that money there. You, yes. it is worth so much money. Yes. $33 for every dollar you bet is crazy. It's crazy. For, for someone like that. For someone who you know is going to work for it. Yes, who is like obviously doing something you don't fucking even know about right now. Right. And what is great about, here's what's great, not to go back to Best Action, but to, a great thing about betting on Andrea Riseborough is you could take part in helping her campaign because you know her campaign is going to be very Twitter-based. So you could retweet yeah. all these tweets I'm gonna. about how she should win. When Ed Norton tweets... Andrew Riseborough should yeah. win Best Actress. We could retweet that. Look, tweet. this is a small movie with a big heart, Pat. Yes, yes, and and big, big retweet. Hong potential. Chow at plus eighteen hundred. Mm -hmm. Stephanie Shu, which I'm sorry, that's how I'm pronouncing it. Mm -hmm. Twenty five hundred. Mm -hmm. Now I think Stephanie Shu, who is also, she's a, a more traditional groundswell. Yeah, she was not involved in everything up until now but people writing articles writing articles writing articles mm -hmm. just willing this into existence yeah and people even, loved her in this yeah and then so she made it she got there yeah. and yeah. because this category is so volatile i'm thinking carrie condon and jamie lee curtis out dead put them in a sack D in a sack stephanie wow. shu hong chow angela bassett that's your top three yeah, I think the money, if you put mm -hmm. equal money on Hong Chow and Stephanie Shu, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Because I, you I, need, if you bet on 20 of these and win two, you've made your money back. Right. That That's the thing about this entertainment gambling, these award show gambling is, especially right now, it is worth spreading some money around on these smart underdogs. Obviously, you don't put money on everyone, huh? There's people who are not going to win. That wouldn't like work. Like you said, Gary Condon's in a sack right now. Yeah. But, 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 yeah, I, I agree. Those are the two underdogs that could win. 
I could very easily see either of them winning the SAG award, and then this race is completely different. Yes, that would be so fucking exciting. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I. Although I did, hmm, I mean, whatever. I, I do want my two hundred dollars from Wakanda Forever winning, but whatever. If I get, right, you know, a thousand dollars from Stephanie Shu, I'll be fine. That's more money. Yeah, (laughs) that's more money. Yeah. So that that is, I agree. Supporting actress is for sure not yeah. locked in because I okay. do think the Marvel movie factor is a is an issue. Okay, so Pat, what's the opposite yes. of uh, anything could happen? Oh, a slam doink, of course. A slam doink, which brings us to best supporting actor. Yes, Kiwi Kwan, obviously the slam doink. We got Brandon yeah. Gleason. We got Barry Keoghan. We both picked him. We got yeah. Judd Hirsch. Nobody picked him. We got Brian Tyree Henry. You picked him. You beat me I in this category. Him. Congratulations. But Kiwi Kwan has now yes. fallen. <laughs> fallen, fallen, fallen. Oh, my God. All no. the way to minus 1,000. I mean, I don't know if I've seen a slam doink this doinky ever. Wow. This is, yeah. This category. Do you have any money on Kiwi, baby? You, you got to. That's the only person to bet on. Do yet. you have any money on him? You know, I haven't put any yet, but at this point, I'll just max out on him. I had to drop some. You got to. He's going to win. To. It's free money. So I put 15 bucks on him to win five bucks last week, it's, just so when he wins, I can add it to my tally. Yes. It's a free. That That is. It's basically like, hey, Bovada, can you money. hold my $15 for me? Yes. And I'll take that and five more yeah, in March. I know you're good for it, basically. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, that it's a slam doink. There is no reason to put any money on anyone else in this category. It, it, there okay. is n- no one else who will win. Kiwi Kwan will win the Oscar, one hundred percent. So it's still muddy whether like our bets are going to work out for any of these categories. Yes. Um, Angela Bassett is a big a big lead. I do think I got a couple hundred coming my way. Ultimately, if none of the fun stuff works out. So, and I got some good money on Colin Farrell. I am kind of rooting for Colin Farrell at the moment. Yeah, he's, he. I mean, listen, I'm Austin Butler. Colin Farrell is my number two. I think the main thing is we all do not want to see Brendan Fraser win this. It would be boring, and that movie is not good. Buddy, let's talk director. Let's do it. All right, so we both went four out of five in this category. Uh, mm-hmm. Neither of us got the fifth. So the, the nominees are for Best Director, The Daniels, For Everything Everywhere, Steven Spielberg, Fableman's, Tar, Todd Field, Martin McDonough for Banshees. And then number five, the surprise, Ruben Oslin for The Triangle of Sadness. He got in there. Good he for got him. the nom, nom, nom. Uh, there is your, I mean, it is pretty much at this point with the new Academy, you know, they've had a lot of new, uh, members the last couple of years and you're always going to get this foreign director slot that gets in there for these small foreign movies. And this year it was Ruben Oslin for triangle. He got it. So and he's made three fun movies and it's time. Yes, yes. He did that's right. He never he didn't get I'm sure he's won best foreign movie for mm. at least one of them, right? Maybe Force Majeure, I'm not I, sure, I don't but think he, so. He had, I don't think the Square so, one either. So he has not he definitely hasn't gotten a best director nom 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 before. He got it here. So I guess the people who we thought may have gotten it that didn't get it was Edward Berger for All Quiet, Baz Luhrmann, was someone, I mean, James Cameron was sort of fishing around here. Uh, S.S. Rajmuli, right, is the director of RR. Those are all the people who were on the bubble, Sarah Polly for Women Talking, and none of them got Best Director. Um, I believe he was nominated in 2018. For a foreign film? Uh, yeah, which I suppose was The Square. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he's a he's definitely someone who the Academy likes. He won the Palm Door, you know, which for all the DGens out there, that is a, a big deal foreign film award. You mean the, the Deegans? Film Festival. The Deegans. Oh my God. Oh, don't at me, Deegans. Don't at me. 
You, yo, you are a, you're a, you're a deep, you're a deeple. Yeah. A oh deplorable. Boy. Oh boy. Please don't at me. I love SGPN. <laughs> of course. Happy to be part of the family. Sorry. Of Sorry, Deegan's. Okay. So, um, Pat, I want to talk a little about my betting. Okay. Now I maxed out the Daniels on two platforms at plus seven hundred. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That was when uh, max out was twenty five thirty bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, at plus seven hundred though, that's pretty good. I was already you know easily going to win a few hundred bucks. Yep. Um, last week I put another hundred dollars on the Daniels. Oh, they were uh, at, at uh, minus one ten. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, now, as it stands, uh, they are minus one forty. And wow, you know, obviously, this is um, pretty great for me. Yes, um, they are so I, probably going to win, and when they do, I'm going to get you know over five hundred bucks back. That is amazing. I so I've maxed oh, out. Oh, sorry, on them. I should say it's because Bovada. Um, after I maxed it out, they raised all of their bets. Their bets are at like two hundred dollars now. Really? And I know this oh sucks for you, God. but oh. honestly, Pat, you gotta, I gotta find just, some, you gotta talk to Greg. Talk I gotta, to Greg. I gotta talk to Greg. You gotta, I gotta like well, you know grease the wheels. Have yeah, him sign yeah. up. Tell him he gets his percentage, huh? Huh? He gets his well, little beak wet. Here's here. So so for the listeners, of course, I'm in New York. Nick's in L.A. Bavada is not yet available in new york but no, it's but, no longer available in new york. oh it was <laughs> yeah. oh they they really screwed me yeah this the new york governor or whoever it is decides that they really had it in for me but i Lady will Pataki. be yeah. in los angeles <gasps> yes. in a week and a half oh, so yes. when i am in the state the computer of mine will also be in the state can i then place bets oh pat you silly goose no you need a not you need a license i need a lie oh my god well i don't have a i can place bets in any country in the world as long as i use a vpn because i I, have a license yeah yeah well you have a driver's license you're saying from california yes okay see the thing is i have no driver's license anywhere well you have an id i I know you're a very to put together guy i know you have i am idea. i'm on the grid you're the right. idea yeah. would, would work so basically i need to just get someone in los angeles to place these bets for me because that bavada bet is amazing i do have i do have uh on bet us i maxed out on the daniels a while ago for best director so i've got money on them there but yes but oh now my. maxing out is hundreds more baby oh that sounds incredible I mean, I've always been a New York person, uh, New York over LA, but this is the one thing that's finally making me feel All right, like maybe we gotta I go. just we move gotta to go. LA. Um, All right. So that's Best director. Picture. Obviously, it's the Daniels. It's never going to be anybody else. Put all your money on the Daniels, even at minus 140. It's dumb not to put every dollar you have on that bet. Okay. Yes, yes. Next. Mortgage Best movie. House. We got the full tent. We got the dumb ones. We got Avatar. We got Top Gun. Mm-hmm. We got dumb shit that shouldn't be there, but it's this kind of year, and we got it. We, we got, got all the quiet. Fablements. Mm-hmm. We got Banshees. Yep. We got All Quiet on the Western Front. We got Nailed Tar. It. Yes. We got Women Talking. We've got I did, The did Whale. Did we both get oh, Women the Talking? The did get nominated. No, it didn't. Wait, it didn't. Why is it in here? I don't know what you... You must be looking at a prediction. No, I'm looking list. at Bovada. Yeah. No, the whale the wh- is at plus ten thousand. So the best picture nominees: All Quiet, Avatar, Banshees, Elvis, Everything Happen. Everywhere All at Once, Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun, Maverick, and then the two ones that got those last two spots: Triangle of Sadness, Triangle of Sadness, and and Women Talking, yeah. which I predicted Women Talking. I actually went nine for ten on my best picture nom nom noms. I, I just went didn't eight for get. ten. I also had Women Talking. Mm-hmm. I did not have Triangle of Sadness. Yeah. And I did not have. Uh, what else did I not have? And I don't think you had women talking. No, I. I uh, oh, did I not? 
No, I thought you I didn't. did. I had uh, RRR and, and Glass Onion. I guess I yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. You were okay. you were very clear. You're like I never, I never vote for women, women. talking. That women is, talking. Yeah. And then, okay. yeah, and, I'm and very she said that. also was it was wrapped up in that. Yeah, two phrases that you're just like I'm I'm out on those. Right. Um. Yeah. I mean, listen. I think this is a pretty good. Just quality wise, ten, even the dumb ones, your Top Gun or your Avatar. Sure, obviously they're, they're very fun. quality dumb ones. Yes, fun, dumb, and full of. You they're know not the rest regular of that. movies. I appreciate. I appreciate that they did the thing very well. Yes. And yes. And like Top Gun Maverick is like single handedly responsible for saving the movie industry. I think that this this is a good thank you for that. A hundred percent. Even if they're not going to win, the Academy Awards should have a segment where like Tom Cruise and James Cameron come out and just they cheer for them. They hold up their box office tallies and they walk off. Absolutely. Uh, Yeah. So looking at these, it's also an interesting race because honestly, they're realistically, I would say four movies here that I think all have a shot to actually win Best Picture. Uh, okay, is, we're doing this? I, do you not? Do you think there is a slam? you think there's a slam doink here? I do. That's why I spent last week putting also a bunch of money on EEA to win. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I put another 60 bucks on EEA okay. at, uh, at my, uh, uh, believe, minus one. 40 i think like it's a big favorite now yes i mean it's the favorite it's 165 now after the the nominations i do i do still see this as kind of a four-way race with yeo fableman's (laughs) banshees and i think tar is a really strong contender because you look at the nominations that tar got it got picture director screenplay but it also got cinematography and editing Mm -hmm. which are pretty big ones tar is definitely the classy pick for the academy well i would love that because i put 10 bucks on tar at uh plus 1000 so give it to me yeah i i I think it's a kind of a four-way race fableman's to me is the one that could fade as we get closer, I think that is the the shakiest one, but I think Banshees is in there, and I think Tar's got a shot, and Fableman's could surge if Spielberg really campaigns for it. Yeah, and I think everything well, else has gonna. no chance. He's he's gonna in his way. He's gonna you know, like, campaign a little, which means like he'll leave his house four times. Yes, he's not gonna ask Ed Norton and Courtney Cox to tweet for him. But he'll like accept a big award. What if he asked at, Andrea Riseborough to tweet for him? Would, she'd have would to you do respect it. that? I, I mean, she'd have to. What if he asked Todd Field to give him his hat? You know he'd give it to him. It's his Indiana Jones. Oh, hat. he's gotta give him the hat. He's seen he's it three hundred times. That hat. Yeah, he's gotta give think Spielberg that when, hat. You think he's watched the movie since he was nominated for In the Bedroom when he first told Spielberg that he had watched that movie over two hundred times? Do you think he uh, watched it since? I don't think so. And he may have even been, he may have been overshooting it a bit when he said that. <laughs> and then Spielberg was like, I've seen little children over 6,000 times. He's like, yeah. I haven't even made that yet. Okay. Um. So yeah, I think this it's, I like that this best picture race is not a slam doink. There are some possible contenders here. Well, I really um, hope it's a slam doink because I, uh, if it, if it is, if they do win, I'm getting a couple hundred bones back. Um, so anything else then that you want to talk about from, because I mean, the Oscars nominate a lot of categories. Uh, we'll yeah, go no, I mean, obviously we the... don't care about the other categories. I do want to run through where you can bet right now and what you can bet on. Go for it. Um, so bet us, uh, currently it has no Oscar lines. They're still figuring out their numbers apparently, but they mm-hmm. have the spirit awards and they have new entries, the SAG awards and the PGA awards. So they they really still are, I mean, just incredible when it comes to lines on stuff because they've also got um, 
the Golden Raspberry Awards, the Ooh. Brit Awards, the Grammy Awards, the Nobel Prize, Person of the Year, Sports Personality of the Year, Nobel Peace Prize. They've got so much stuff. So much so, stuff. So anyway, that's great. Um, but in terms of uh, movie betting exclusively, Bovada has your Academy lines um, and your Grammy lines. I wish I wish the Grammys weren't d- a dumb award show and we could like really give you good info on that. But I mean, you can't. It it's there's too many categories, and they just don't. You just can't pick it. It's always something else. It's oh yeah. There's way too many categories. And listen, I'll just be honest. Uh, I I haven't listened to new music since 2007, so I I don't know. I know people. it's not the same as yeah. it was. Yeah, I, as I was it out. was. That's my One. that's my pick if you're going to put money on best song. As it was. Okay. Um where else is there? Every game they got some lines. Um GT bets? How are they doing? Nothing yet. Um and still nothing from my bookie. Um I'm I wish there was more. I wish this was a more diverse field. I'm sorry. But I, uh, I, I feel like it'll heat up in the next. Couple it will of weeks. definitely I do... heat up. I, I I have a feeling all of these sites are going to eventually get these lines in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I have faith in my bookie. Yeah. So this is very exciting. There is some places you have to go. I mean, uh, Pat, if you've got one suggestion, my suggestion is Andrea Riseboro, thirty seven fifty to win thirteen hundred dollars. I mean, it's dumb. Do it. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. Also. There is uh, a couple of places have the the line for is there going to be a slap? Oh wow! And the lines are very favorable to no slap, but someone even if it's not like a part of the show, someone could just do one just cause. I assume well, they're told not to. Well, okay. Here's the thing on the slap or no slap betting: if it's comedy slap, the, will it count? Well, there's there's yes. going to be a comedy slap. I mean, it's yes. Jimmy Kimmel hosting. He's, I mean, he's one of his writers is going to be last minute. Hey, you, you got to do a slap. Let's have yeah, cousin I just, Sal slap you. I or envision whoever. that the academy says that's a no go. Oh, but I mean, if there's anyone who breaks all the comedy rules, it's Jimmy Kimmel. So, well, for sure, he is um, our court jester. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think that I would put some heavy money on, you know. Cousin Sal is going to slap Jimmy Kimmel in the monologue of the Oscars. Yeah. So anyway, that's a good bet. And you can bet 10 bucks on that and, you know, win 100 bucks or whatever. And I yeah. think that is a very fun thing to have in the back of your head when you are watching the Oscars. Yes, yes, yes. Prop betting on the Oscars is, is is one of the most fun things. If you can tell people to vote on or to bet on one person for the Academy Awards, who is it, Pat? Based on today, I'm with you. I, Andrew Riseboro is the fun way to go today. Yeah. Because it's just such a fun story to be part of. Mm-hmm. It's so it's so wild. So we all got to get on that ride. And it helps with her. that there are two front runners. Yes. That's the worst number of front runners. Yes. Yes. You <laughs> want to be you want to be Kiwi Kwan. Right. Where he's at the top of a mountain and everyone else is. You know, park in their car at the and the Pat, trail. as you know, Andrea Riseborough got into this category because the people that did have her on her ballot all had her at number one. Yes. So yes. I think I mean that's a big deal. If you put someone at number one and they got in it and it's the best story, you're gonna have them at number one on your ballot, and you're gonna encourage people because you feel responsible for her. Yes, her fans are maniacal. And that is the kind of hey, that is the kind of base in. you want to have. I'm yeah. One of them. Oh, we're listen. She we might will as well be, be Brene Brown. Yeah. I'm obsessed. You're obsessed, and we will be retweeting every tweet about how she should win the Oscar. Yes. Guaranteed. Pat, um, I think people should check out our Patreon. Uh, oh, we'll put stuff up there a little early. We've got video of uh, each show. We uh, we put up fun stuff like uh, our bets, our predictions that uh, for for any show um, that we're Mm -hmm. betting on or not. And um, that's our little community. Check us out on Discord, on the TV and movies on SGPN. Um, And uh, 
I don't know. And you and you got to check out the B.O. Boys. Uh, the latest oh, the episode. B.O. Pat, talk to us. So the B.O. Boys, we talk box office movie news every week. And this week, one thing we're really drilling down in on is this historic Puss in Boots Last Wish run. It's akin to the greatest showman run of a few years ago. You got to be a part of this history. Puss in Boots, an incredible run. We cover it on the B.O. Boys okay. every week. Wow. Congratulations. Uh, and, uh, oh, check out Fraudsters. That's a show that I, I'm writing now, a podcast I'm writing. We just did some episodes about uh, the diamond industry and why they fucked us. They invented not- everything. Everything, everything you know about diamonds was invented in the last 100 years. It's all bullshit. Don't be a part of it. And then coming up, we've got a three-episode deep dive into Lou Pearlman, the biggest piece of shit who ever lived. It's an exciting, fun show. Check it out. Fraudsters. Wow. So Lou Pearlman, not good. Diamond's not good. Oh, buddy. Not I, good. I wish you had told me that before I proposed to my wife. Well, you should have used her ago. grandmother's diamond, which is what I did. Uh, and, I, and I shouldn't have had Lou Pearlman at the wedding. No, and you shouldn't have had a pearl there. It's a diamond, no. buddy. Get oh, it. All God. right. That's our show. Uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, things are heating up. It is so exciting. Bet on this, Lady Andrea. I love you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>